just like when we had that negative 3 in front of the sine of x and multiplied all of our y values by negative 3, adding 2.5 to the end of this is going to add 2.5 to all of our y values. So if I start at 0, 0 originally, then um, I'm going to start at 2.5. If at pi over 2 I hit my maximum of 1, well, it's going to be 2.5 units higher than that. It's going to be at 3.5. And at pi, I'm going to be back at 2.5. At 3 pi over 2, I'm going to hit my minimum of 1.5 instead of negative 1. And then at 2 pi, I'm going to be back at my midline. This determines the location of the midline. So if I fill this in, okay, nothing else changed. My period's still the same. I'm still completing one cycle by the time I get to 2 pi. It's just shifting that, and I can keep going. Okay, it's just shifting the entire graph up 2 pi units, and I can keep going in this direction as well. And it's taking the entire graph up 2.5 units. So I could draw a horizontal line right through here. This is not part of the graph, but this is just a visual for you here. And I didn't do a very good job. There we go. At the end. Okay, that horizontal line there is the midline. My amplitude is still one. There's still one unit between my midline and my maximum and my midline and my minimum. So I didn't change the amplitude. I didn't change the period. 2.5 is a vertical shift, okay? This coefficient d is a vertical shift. If it's plus, then it's up. If it's minus, it's down. Okay, and it's shifting the midline. We were on the x-axis. Now we're up two and a half units. Yes? What do you mean express? Well, like write it out in words? Yeah. 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 Oh. Well, there's multiple choice. You, you say would have one or the other. I prefer fractions, but I mean decimals kind of make more sense when you're graphing because. Anyways, I mean, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, now let, let's look. Let's do look at the at the calculator for just a minute. Um, just so that we know where everything is. Because when you do have your calculator at your disposal, make sure though that when you're typing this in, you close the parentheses after the X. Because the plus 2.5 is stuck on the end. The only time you wouldn't close the parentheses is if they had parentheses around it in the clock. Okay, the parentheses are only around the x. And then there's the original, sine of x. And then here comes our um, additional, our, our translation. Okay, it moved up two and a half units. Now, it may be kind of hard to see. So let me also put in 2.5, just y equals 2.5, so you can see the midline right there. Okay, that goes directly through the middle of that translation, so you can kind of see the symmetry. Okay, now, typically they don't just do one at a time. They like to put a bunch of them together. So, let's make our own. All right, let's see here. So we did a negative one the first time. So let's say f of theta. They like to use theta as well. Theta is just another variable. You're still going to type x into your calculator, but they like to use theta whenever they're using trig. Uh, give me a number between 1 and 4. 3. Three. All right. Sign of, uh, give me a number between 2 and 5. Four, and give me a number between negative five and zero. Okay, we like threes. That's okay. 
All right, so just by looking at the equation, we should be able to identify some things. What is our amplitude? Three. That's the easy one. This is the number in front. The amplitude is three. That's the coefficient f. So I know that from my midline, I go up three units. From my midline, I'm going to go down three units. What is my period? Mm, one half. Okay, because this is b. The period, we do 2 pi divided by b. So 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. So we're taking what we normally accomplish between 0 and 2 pi, and now we're accomplishing it between 0 and pi over 2. We're severely shrinking this graph, okay, horizontally. And what is, where is our, what, what is the vertical shift? Down 3. Now, I'm not going to go through the process of graphing this by hand, but it is important that you be able to pick out those three characteristics and know what they are called. Okay? You've got to be able to pick out those three characteristics from the equation and know what they're called. So now I'm going to type it into my equation, 6 sine of 4x, close the parentheses, did I say 6? Yes. 3 sine of 4x. I don't even know where 6 came from. You know, putting those threes together. I don't know. Did somebody just say 3 times 3? Three? 3 sine of 4x. Close the parentheses. Minus 3. Um, where should our midline be? Negative 3. Because we shifted down 3 units. So just, just to have that visual of the midline. So, still, here's our original. I always want you to compare it to the original. And here comes our translation. Now, there are a bunch of cycles of it because we have condensed the period down from 2 pi units to pi over 2 units. So we're taking this big old graph right here and we're squishing it. So we've got an entire cycle right there. So in these, what is it, 4 pi units? How many cycles have we completed? Without counting them all, just think about it for a second. How many cycles? Two. Eight. If one's completed in pi over two, that means you get two within pi, and we've got four pi's, so two times four is eight. We completed eight cycles between zero and four pi. Or I guess if we include the left side of this, there would be 12. Because um, we went from negative 2 pi to 4 pi. Um, it is a little bit taller as well. Um, you can see that. That's another thing that kind of emphasizes um, this translation. It's taller and it's squished. So it's very exaggerated. So the biggest thing I think that you need to be able to do is you need to be able to, be able to identify these three things. You need to know A, B, and D, what those coefficients are, where they're located in the equation, and what they do. Uh, because they, I, I have a feeling we're going to use this terminology. So when they say amplitude, you got to know what they're talking about. When they say period, you got to know what they're talking about. When they say midline, you got to know what they're talking about. It's not just plugging that in y equals and graphing it. If that's all it is, great, you're overprepared. But I'd rather you be overprepared than underprepared.